Yo, what is going on guys? So today I'm pretty much gonna give you guys an overview on my whole build. Um, this is gonna be my second or third time starting the car. Uh, I did have some issues getting it to idle and want to hold an idle. Then again, it is not retuned, so that's going to be one of the reasons why. But my TPS, uh, my throttle position sensor was just out of whack and out of voltage. So I needed to find a way to kind of readjust uh, the actual voltage on it. I had to end up kind of finagling the actual sensor and I needed to make the holes a little bit bigger to get more adjustment. Um, the voltage on your TPS sensor should be between, I want to say 4.5 or like 0.45 and I think like 0.55 volts or 5.5 volts. I don't know. It's supposed to be between like 4.5 and 5.5. That's all I remember. And my sensor just kept hitting like, I think it was like 66. Like it was one like, it was like 6.6 .6 or 0.66. And that was like way out of range. So I had to kind of, like I said, finagle the sensor. I had to drill the mounting holes just a little bit bigger to get more adjustment on it. And it's idling now. Of course, it wants to die every once in a while when I blew the throttle, but it is idling now. Uh, everything came out perfect. The car is overall like it's running. There are no leaks anywhere. I did have some exhaust leaks when I first started the car up. I tightened everything up, snugged everything up. So that's all gone. But I think that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, very exciting. Uh, can't wait to get this car tuned. I can't wait to start driving it. I was thinking about driving it today, but I, don't know, I think I'm just gonna wait on it. So, I don't know, the throttle is a little bit sticky. It's kind of weird because uh, when I actually turn it on, I don't know if it's the actual like vacuum that's causing it to stick, but I can kind of feel like a little bit of tension on the throttle when I'm actually like stepping on it. I can feel like there's something kind of holding it and pushing it back. And it's weird because like when I turn the car off, it literally like I can press it in and out like perfect like it doesn't feel like there's anything in the way so I think it might be because of vacuum so I'm gonna have to adjust the throttle plate to just kind of open up just a little bit kind of like that flapper I'm just gonna adjust it to open just a little bit um, later on or if not I'll see if I just leave like that it's just it feels a little bit awkward either that or I'm just not used to driving the car anymore since it is cable driven and the Forester is uh, not cable driven it has an electronic throttle body um, so that could be the case too but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna start the car. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys pretty much what I've done to the vehicle and uh, pretty much go from there. Man, this GC came along and there's still so much I still need to do to the car uh, in terms of getting it running, you know, getting it tuned and what's what, so on and so forth. So yeah, and then next year I'm gonna go sequential. So that's gonna be like the, the game over uh, piece of everything. So yeah, let's uh, step up to the car and I'll show you guys pretty much everything. and all my hard work and what I've really been putting into the car. Boy, I'm so excited. It's freaking awesome. Just everything just came together so well. Ooh, all right. And here she is, looking perfect. Man, this thing came along so well. Literally just everything just pieced together so perfectly. This car has gotten all the love and all the attention for me that I could ever give it and I am so proud of building this car. That's the thing too, it's like I built this car, like nobody else really laid their hands on it except me. The only stuff I wasn't able to do, um, obviously still to this day, is tune the car or do any of the fab work. Um, everything else I pretty much did. I made all of, my, all of my AN lines, I made all the fuel lines as well. I you know, fuel pump, just everything that doesn't involve fab work or tuning, I pretty much did. So, yeah, a huge shout out to everybody too that just kept supporting me throughout the whole build. You guys really are awesome. You guys were just motivating me to keep pushing through and just keep building this car. And here she is. I am absolutely happy with this car. You guys do not even know, so. Yeah, I am gonna go over everything in as much detail as I can. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so let's start with the interior. So as far as the interior goes, I'm gonna start from the back and go towards the front. Have a fire extinguisher mount on my harness bar. This is going to be a Tech 208, I wanna say. My little camera mount right there. Can't remember what exactly it was, but Yep, I have my fire extinguisher and a harness bar. I am running Takata harnesses as well. I do this because it just makes it easier to put them on, but I got Takata harnesses. And then as far as seats goes, I have 
an SPA for the driver's side, which is going to be for me, it's carbon Kevlar. And then on the passenger side, I have a Recaro um, SPG. So yeah, the passenger is going to be fiberglass and the driver's side is carbon Kevlar. This thing, just, they just look so good together. And pretty much moving forward from here, this is a 98 model, so the door cards are from a 99 to 2001. Uh, those of you that drive GCs know exactly what I'm talking about. The 98 model specifically is the only year that got like these tiger stripe looking uh, door cards. So both my front and the rear door cards are going to be those uh, checkered uh, 99 to 01 door cards. And pretty much moving on forward from there, I have a Nardi personal steering wheel. This thing is mated with an NRG quick release setup. Uh, so you guys can see NRG right there in the back. And then I actually have a work spell or quote unquote splash hub, which is gonna be what I'm using here. And this works with my turn signals, clock spring completely like it, it clears a clock spring. That's exactly why I went with the splash slash work spell hub. So yeah, that's freaking awesome. All these switches are going to be auxiliary switches uh, for these two, and then my fog lights, I don't have them hooked up, so that doesn't matter. This right here in the middle is my LED telling me that my secondary fuel pump is turning on, so that's what that is there. You guys will see that thing light up white when I am racing. Uh, yeah, just whenever you see my face light up in white is because of this thing right here. It's just letting me know that my secondary fuel pump is working and that I don't have any electrical issues there. Um, if I do end up having an electrical issue, this will not turn on, so that means that I have a problem with my secondary fuel pump. So for those of you guys that are all running fuel pumps that are secondary switched um, with either a Hobbs or you turn on a switch to turn it on, I would highly recommend doing that LED mod and just hooking it up into your actual um, your fuel pump just to make sure that you know that you are actually engaging that fuel pump and it is turning on. So yeah. Other than that, uh, STI pedals, ugly junkyard floor mats. I need to get to the RS ones. I really want them so bad. I've just been focusing my money on other things. It's just spending $100 right now on some floor mats. I just can't justify it. But yep, STI pedals, um, GC8 ones to be specific. And I'm gonna go ahead and sit down and show you guys the rest here. So we have a JDM GC8 cluster. So this one is the one that goes up to 9,000, not the one that goes to 10,000. I wish it was, but it is what it is. STI cluster, of course, DCCD readout right here for you as well. Um, it is in kilometers per hour. I had to um, color this in right here because it will not pass the emissions uh, test if it is in kilometers per hour. It needs to be in miles per hour or it needs to read some type of miles per hour on there for the face if you're trying to pass inspection. So uh, yeah, so I ended up blocking that off for that reason. Um, but yeah, the Nardi looks freaking amazing. Um, have my access port. This is no longer gonna be useful for me once I get retuned since I am gonna be in a Haltic standalone. So this is just temporary for now. I'm just, I just have this on right now so that way I can monitor and see how the car is running. Uh, you know, meanwhile, I work on getting the, the tune for the car. So yeah, this is just temporary. This access port is gonna be off soon. So yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna sell it. Those of you that do want it, you guys can hit me up if you want. I'm just not sure what to ask for it. Some people have TGB deletes and cat deletes. Yeah, these are kind of not really good for you guys, they're useful. So yeah, tweeters, I didn't do the tweeters. Uh, previous owner did the tweeters. So yeah, disregard those. Those aren't even working either. As far as the center section goes, I have um, AEM gauges. It's going to be AFR, I have oil pressure, and then I have fuel pressure. So these were the main things that I really wanted to monitor when I was getting my car uh, actually uh, street tuned because I wasn't sure, you know, what was going on at the time when me and my tumor were kind of figuring out this like fuel hiccup because I kept losing like fuel pressure somehow or, you know, I just, I don't know, it, it ended up being like something with injector duty cycle. Like I just don't think he was bumping up the injector duty cycle enough. And then once he bumped it up, my fuel pressure was just perfectly fine the entire time. So we're just like, that's a little weird, a little awkward, but yep. Those are the three things I love to monitor. Um, yeah, it's just very important that you monitor one of these three, two of these three, or if you really wanna go balls to the wall, all of these three, because these are extremely important. You definitely don't wanna blow up your engine because you either lose oil pressure, lose fuel pressure, which in case will actually make you run lean. So it's just very important to have these. So yeah, AM gauges, uh, they are X series as well. Forgot to mention that, X series gauges. I have a little like Sony um, Apple CarPlay radio. 
I am on a uh, SCI six speed, so I got the SCI six speed shift knob, and it's got some of these like JDM GC8 wiper things. I don't know. I never really use these in like cruise control or something like that. I just don't know how this works. It's not wired in, but yep, it's that passenger side seat looking really good, and I have the. Passenger side, cubby delete. This is for the USDM left-hand drive models. I did not retrofit a right-hand drive delete onto a left-hand drive. This is a left-hand drive, like a real legit left-hand drive uh, cubby delete. So yeah, um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it for the interior. Got my little Bunta just uh, hanging out right there. And yeah, that's pretty much it here. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the exterior of the car. I have a Bakamoto GC8 a replica version six. Yeah, version six replica rear wing. It is fiberglass, JDM tails, JDM rear bumper. I have the JDM spats and the aero guards as well. So that is right here on the rear end. I am running RPF1s, uh, 17 by nines. And they clear the brakes pretty well if you have the GC8 four pot, two pots. And they are just awesome running 255 tires on them. Fitment is amazing. I absolutely love the fitment on it. So yeah, so yep, I'm running RPF1s, 255 tires. Uh, they are Kumos, the V730s. They are awesome, they're grippy, it's super nice. And then GC8, real GC8, uh, four pot, two pot caliper setup. And then I'm running DVA rotors on it as well. And for suspension, I'm running BC coilovers, so yeah that is pretty much it on the rear end i want to say and yeah so obviously uh oem gc8 or 2.5 or a side skirts so that is what i'm running here and then arrow guard right here and you know just running the full arrow guards arrow guard set uh right here i have an hic rain visor so that is what this is you guys for the, you guys that asked me what uh visors these are they are hic visors so there you go. If you are gonna order some, they do have a pretty long uh, lead time, so just be aware. Yeah, obviously I have window tint all around my windows, but yep, RPF ones were once again, uh, same spec, obviously, squared setup, 17 by nine, 255 tires, GC8 calipers. So these are pretty much like the ones that have like the, they're like embossed or whatever, so they kind of like, they're like 3D or whatever, but. Yep, running those calipers, same thing here, DBA rotors, BC coilovers. You're not gonna really be able to see it, but under the car, like as far as suspension goes, I am running a Cusco uh, suffering brace, so you can't see that, but that kind of ties into it. And right here, USDM uh, bumper. I'm running fog light covers, of course, clear headlights, JDM clear corners. I do not have an aluminum hood and I do not have a carbon fiber hood. I really want one really bad. And if I do end up buying a carbon fiber hood, I'm going to paint it. That's just, that's just the name of the game. I'm going to paint it. If I don't end up painting it, then I'll probably get matching uh, fenders and I'll probably get a matching matching trunk for it. But I have a feeling I'm gonna wanna paint it. So yeah, OEM, steel hood, absolutely heavy. It sucks. Pro drive, vent induction scoop here. And for the rest of the front end, I am running a JDM GC8 version five, version six front grille. This intercooler is gonna be a Mishimoto four inch core intercooler. It fits, it, you know, I had to trim the bumper some, some more to get it to fit, but it does fit. And then I'm running JDM OEM style version six front lip. And I wanna say that's gonna be it for the exterior. Super clean, you know, OEM plus, it's what I'm all about. I just love having my car looking pretty much clean how it would from the factory, plus a little bit more. That's just me. I don't like really going overboard with splitters, side skirts, and just all that stuff. I just think OEM Plus is the way to go when it comes to me. So that is gonna be it here for the exterior. All right, and this is where all the magic really is. This is where my absolute pride and my hard work comes in. It's going to be everything under the hood. Um, pretty much powertrain wise, that is my that is my work. Um, paint, bodywork is not my work. Fabbing was not my work. Putting everything together and getting this thing running was my work. So this is my absolute pride right here. I 
literally built this myself. Uh, this car's been running for almost, I think a year and a half, two years maybe on this engine setup and transmission setup. So it just kind of shows, you know, the amount of quality that I just love to put into my builds. Uh, this is my first build, by the way. It's my first time actually putting an engine together. So I take a lot of pride in that and it just came out super well. But let's go over pretty much everything I have here. I'm probably gonna go from the right and go over to the left. Sorry if I kind of lose like my track, whatever with my camera. It's just, it's kind of hard to kind of focus on you know, just everything at once. So I'm just gonna start from the right and then pretty much go to the left. So, all right. So for fuel, so I'm just gonna pretend that, you know, you guys are looking at the, the rear end of the car. My battery is relocated to the back. I have a radium dual hanger in the back of the car as well. When I'm running for fuel, so radium dual hanger, Walbro, uh, two Walbro 450s. Uh, one is operated by a hop switch and I'm running uh, vibrant fuel lines. So it's gonna be those uh, PTFE lines. So I'm running PTFE lines for both the feed and the return. And what's going into the feed is going to be an Aeromotive. This is an Aeromotive, uh, I can't remember what micron filter it was. I can't remember if it was like 100 or 10 microns. I can't remember, but Aeromotive fuel filter, so there is that. I'm running E85. It is going to be on flex fuel next time. You guys see this thing running and actually tuned because it's, it's running right now. So I'm gonna show you guys, obviously, but <laughs> uh, yeah, next time it's tuned, it's gonna be on flex fuel. So I'll be running both 91 and E85 whenever I want. More than likely, it's just gonna be E85, but it's nice to have flex fuel just in case. And you know, in case you get E85, that's not good, it's shitty. But yeah, so. Aeromotive uh, fuel filter. I have a little fuse conjunction box here. So uh, that is where I have all of my positives running through. And then that will go all the way back to the rear of the battery. So that's how I'm getting my power all the way up to the front. So that junction box, I'm just running that fat wire all the way to the back. And as far as fat wire goes, I'm running it through the actual interior. I did not run it outside. I just don't trust it. You never know what can happen. So yeah. So I got the junction box here. Um, from here, I got a tile blow off valve. This is the Tile Q. This is not the Tile 50 millimeter, the old one, the classic one. So this is the Tile Q. And for charge piping, this is custom charge piping that was done by my homie Ugo. Pretty much right here, we have the Cosworth. I'm not sure if you would actually see them, but right here we have the Cosworth fuel rails. So Cosworth fuel rails, FIC 2150 injectors. Uh, I'm not sure if you will see them, but there they are, FIC 2150s. And that's gonna be it for the fueling here. Everything is PTFE as well, so I just really wanted to make sure everything was PTFE for fuel since I am running E85. And from here, uh, I am running the IAG clear timing covers, IAG tensioner as well. I am running the JDM SCI carbon Kevlar uh, mix timing belt or whatever. I'm running LIC idlers. Not sure if these are extremely dirty. Yeah, they are looking pretty dirty, so you probably won't be able to tell. Um, yeah, it's gonna be tough. To, oh, you can kind of see them. I'm running the BC cam gears as well, both on the intake and exhaust, so BC cam gears also. So that's gonna be pretty much it for the uh, valve train setup, I guess. And actually, I forgot. Fluid damper. Yeah, so there it is, fluid damper. I'm running a fluid damper on it, so that's gonna tie into it as well. Now, moving on, kind of more towards the front, I guess. I'll, I'll go towards the front and then pretty much go towards the back. So I am running, like I said, Mishimoto four-inch intercooler. I'm running the Mishimoto uh, radiator for the for the car as well. I am running two small fans. I think they were 11 inch fans. So two small fans, they do the job, they cool. This car is not having any issues with uh, cooling and stuff. It's not overheating. So those are doing the trick. I had an issue where it was kind of wanting to overheat and it was because of the eBay fans, they just weren't keeping up. So that's that. I'm running the IAG alternator relocation kit. So that is why my alternator is here. Regardless, I wouldn't have been able to run my alternator in the middle if I wanted to go reverse manifold and wanted to do my process plus manifold. So yeah, so alternator relocated it. I am running speed density on it as well. This intercooler pipe is not made for the new setup. This is a uh, 2.5 or 2.75 piping. I'm going three inch, uh, pretty much. It's gonna be starting here. It's going to be three inch, and then it's gonna be three inch just all the way around, all the way up until it gets here. So I'm gonna have my speed density sensor plumbed in. Right now I don't have a port for my speed density sensor, so it's showing as negative 40. That's what it defaults to when you're on speed density, and the sensor is dead, so yeah. I don't have my speed density port in there and I don't have a sensor plugged in obviously because I don't have a little a little uh, spot to actually throw it in. So there is that. Boomba, throttle body, 
process west manifold god i i i love this manifold this thing is just looks so amazing this ah uh, this, this this is freaking awesome i freaking just love this thing but yeah process of manifold i appreciate them so much for the hard work and for making me a, this custom piece right here to actually fit my car so yeah huge shout out you guys you guys are awesome you guys really just yeah process west manifold and i'm running an ig aerial separator i am running uh aeromotive fuel pressure regulator and i'm running obviously the am fuel pressure sensor so that's why i have the sensor right there so that's gonna be the wiring for it and uh i think that's pretty much gonna be it for this side right here so moving on to this side um pretty much i forgot to mention as well i am running the iag tgvs uh they are the v2s i want to say i think they're the v2 so they're kind of like open in the middle right here so you can do some pretty cool tucking and whatnot so v2s and then for the power steering line i am running the iag power steering kit line or whatever line kit so there is that right there and moving pretty much onto this side uh, i am running okada i don't know if you're gonna be able to see him but i am running um okada uh, ignition coils on the car and the only thing I stick to are going to be the NGK iridium spark plugs so that is what I run on the car and Mishimoto uh, overflow I have the IAG expansion tank here and like I said all the lines and stuff I made myself so save some money there it's just they're super easy to do that yeah they're super easy guys um, other than that moving on towards the back here I'm running the STI uh, carbon strut brace here. This is gonna be the JDM GC8 version, of course. Uh, you can see my BC coilovers. And here, this is where really like the, the magic really is here. It's gonna be in that turbo. The manifold has a huge part in it, no, without a doubt. Like it has a, such a huge part, but change out the turbo. So this is going to be my Garrett G35-1050. Uh, this turbo is going to be capable of all the power that I'm going to absolutely want out of this setup. So that is what I'm running there. Spoon capabilities, I don't know what it's going to be like, but it is more efficient. It makes more power in like the mid-range from what I was seeing from the compressor map. So it's going to be a very interesting turbo setup. Um, and pretty much what's going to be pretty much powering up this turbo from the exhaust. So I have ETS headers and going up to the ETS rotated kit. So ETS Max Flow V2 headers. ETS hot side kit, you know, with the hot side kit, you're gonna have the downpipe as well. Um, so yeah, there's that, and then I have a torque solutions, throw blankets, so yeah. And pretty much moving from the back here, which you cannot see, I have an XD twin disc clutch. Uh, made it to that twin disc clutch, it's going to be an STI six speed manual. It's gonna be from an 04 STI. Not exactly an ideal year. Uh, the best year you want to get is going to be an 07 STI Trans. It's perfect for the, those of you guys that do not have ABS sensors or speed sensors on your wheels, like the wheel speed sensors, because you can use the cable pretty much like you, you can use like the, it has like a little cable harness pretty much where like there's like a sensor in there and it'll detect your speed. So that way you don't have to do anything with your ABS system to actually get it to read with like the 20, I think it's like the 2008 and up STI transmissions because they don't have that little port. It uses the ABS system to track how fast you're going. So um, yeah, SCI six speed, 04. Like I said, try to get an 07 if you can. If you like the H pattern manuals, just get an 07 SCI six speed and call it a day. Perfect ratios, one through one through six are absolutely perfect on the 07. This one being an 04 SCI trans, it's a little awkward. It's, it's like, it's a little awkward because of the fourth to fifth transition. So as I was saying, so the, Fourth to fifth transition on the 04 SCI Trans is just awkward. It's hard to explain, but if you're like on a really big turbo and you know your turbo is not gonna hit full boost above 5K, that can really be a buzzkill when you have the 04 SCI Trans. Reason being is because that Trans has like a weird ratio from fourth to fifth. Like, I don't know what the exact numbers are for like the ratio on that, but Whenever I go from like fourth to fifth, when I'm actually doing a pull and like, you know, doing runs with people, like I'll fall out of boost, man. Like it's, it's really bad. Like if you don't like to no lift shift, like, I don't know, that 04 SCI trans is not going to be for you. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad trans if you like to no lift shift. I just don't like to do it because I don't want to break my trans and I've never actually done it on this trans. So 
I'm just that guy that I just don't want to break anything on my car. Um, at least not yet, because I just don't have the extra funds to be replacing stuff in case I do break something. So I'm just, I'm keeping it safe, you know, playing it safe and not no lift shifting because I just, I don't want to break anything. So that's, that's just me. But yeah, for those of you guys, like I said, if you guys are doing an SCI uh, 6 b swap, go for the 07 SCI Trans. It's going to save you so much of a headache. The wiring is way more simple and you just don't have to deal with wheel speed sensors if you have any because if you delete your ABS and you're kind of screwed. So yeah, just get the 07 SCI Trans. You will not regret it. And I forgot to mention too, um, with the uh, rotated hot side kit, I forgot to mention my wastegate. I am running a tile 44 millimeter wastegate on my setup. And um, as far as boost control goes, I'm running a Cobb uh, three port boost controller. I'm thinking about going to like a Mac four port boost controller, just because it, you can actually control your boost a lot better with a four port. So. Thinking about doing that, and not just that, you can actually like triple the amount of boost you can run on it. So like if you're running like a 15 pound wastegate spring, typically you can double that with a three port so you can run 30 pounds. And then anything above 30 pounds can be kind of sketch. So at least that's from what I remember. And then with a four port boost controller, you can run up to like triple. So like instead of it being like capping out at 30, you can actually run a smaller wastegate spring like that 15 and you can triple that. So instead of you know being able to cap out at 30 pounds before you have to switch your wastegate spring and get boost control more reliably, you can actually get all the way up to 45. So kind of something to think about. The four port from what I know at least, I'm not a tuner, it's just what I've heard, is that it's more accurate, you can run more boost with it with a smaller wastegate spring. So I don't know, just something to think about. Um, the very last thing here as well is gonna be with the exhaust. So as far, as exhaust goes, I'm running a Blitz Nurspec catback, so that's gonna be what I'm running there. I still have the resonator in there, and obviously the muffler is still there, so that is what I'm running for exhaust, and I think that's pretty much it, guys. There's not really much else that's special. Um, as far as like the engine goes, um, which I completely forgot to mention, I'm so sorry about that. The engine is going to be an IEG uh, Stage 3. It's like the what did they call it like a tough like yeah state street tough block or whatever or extreme i don't know i don't even remember anymore but back in the day their extreme tough block or whatever it was um their state street was their 950 or like a thousand brake horsepower block so that's what this is i don't know what they call it nowadays since they have like stage four or five x and all these crazy stages on them now but it is the one that's rated for like 950 or 1,000 brake horsepower. Uh, not 1,000 wheel horsepower. I wish it was rated for 1,000 wheel, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, so it's gonna be that. And then it has a nitrate crank, manly rods, manly pistons, ACL bearings. Um, everybody has their own preference when it comes to bearings. So whatever preference you have whether it be king bearings or it be acl bearings just as long as you have upgraded bearings that's all that matters i haven't had any issues i am running an orbit uh acl uh 12 mil pump i think it is or 11 mil pump for the oil pump uh, i'm really trying to think here i'm running the morozo oil pan morozo pickup tube as well mm think that's it for oiling yeah I think that's it for oiling uh, and then as far as heads goes that's really where like the special part of like the you know the airflow portion comes through it's gonna be through the head so the thing about Subarus is like all the magic when it comes to like how much power you can make is within the head so you want to make sure you have really good heads and you build your heads if you're trying to go for some really high power so for those of you guys trying to make really really good power and just be really efficient build your heads Port him, polish him, whatever, polish. Um, yeah, that's that's what I would do is just to make it more efficient. Um, yeah, just get built heads, you know, get some cams if you want a better mid-range or top end, just get some cams. Uh, really, depending on your scenario, you might benefit from having the stock cams because you're kind of, the thing with cams is you're shifting your power band. So like the bigger the cam duration, the higher in the rev range you're shifting that power band. Cams, I don't, I want to say they don't make you more power, but they just make you more power in certain ranges. Um, 
like I said, don't quite quote my word on it, but I think that's how it works. So just remember, you don't have to go big cams just because you want to make more power. You can make a lot of power still with stock cams. It's really where you're trying to shift that power band. So if you're trying to have like a lower end range power band, you might want to stick to stock cams because they'll have a more aggressive lower end on them rather than top end. If you want kind of like mid range, you might want to get like 272s, um, a little bit more in the top range, 280s, and then absolutely insanities like 282s or 284s. Uh, that's gonna be like, yeah, nothing but straight on, just top and power. Um, it's gonna be for those of you guys that love drag racing and you know doing row racing and all that. I think for more of the track guys, you kind of want some mid range to low range, you know, just in case you have to like kind of come out through corners and a very low RPM range. So your setups, like when you guys build them, just think about what your build is really about because that's really what's going to tie in to what you want to do on your build and what you should do on your build. Um, so my build, it wasn't built for the track. That's not the reason why I did it. I did not do it for autocross or circuit racing or anything. I did it literally just for, for like roll racing. I did it for drag racing and that was pretty much it. I didn't really focus on anything else. So that is why my setup is the way that it is. So as far as head work goes, they are ported and quote unquote polished. I did the work myself when it came to that. I saw some intake valves. I have Cosworth cams in there, Cosworth valve springs, uh, upgraded retainers, upgraded valve guides, and I'm not running AVCS. So those of you guys that are trying to have like a nice low B idle, just like mine, you're gonna wanna delete the AVCS unless you go standalone and somehow you can tune out the AVCS from correcting for you that is pretty much you're gonna have a, uh, an actual cam lobe. You just either delete the AVCS or you run some type of engine software or management that can actually disable the, the cam phasing or whatever from AVCS like when you're at idle because your AVCS will correct your cam phasing when you're at idle so it idles perfectly. So just a heads up for you guys that have the AVCS either single or dual, like if you put cams just don't expect it to have a low P idle because if you have ABCS, it'll more than likely correct the idle and it's gonna idle pretty smooth. You'll definitely notice the power band for sure, but the idle, like, just be aware, like, just don't get your hopes up on it until, unless you have like a standalone where you can like, like I said, modify it or whatever, or like so just some management that you can modify your ABCS phasing with. So um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it for that. Um, the rest of the suspension, just GC8, aluminum control arms, the Cusco suffering brace, uh, Cusco rear strut brace, and I want to say that's it. Turbo cross member, of course. You, I can't fit all this turbo stuff without the turbo cross member since it, since it has a notch in there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and start the car up for you guys. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the idle. And yeah, once again, I appreciate all of you guys. Just the fact that I built this is just crazy to think about. <laughs> just kind of shows that you can do like anything you set your mind to, you can just do it. Just take the time to learn and uh, yeah, just this is great. Like I said too, I, I appreciate everybody for reaching out to me and you know really asking me for help um, and trusting me for the help because to be honest, I don't really build cars for a living. This is my first build. Um, everything I learned, I learned by researching and just digging into the forums and just asking questions like you guys are. So, yeah, this, this build has been amazing so far. And, uh, yeah, just thank you guys so much.
right. And of course, I have a check engine light. That is because of this right here. So as you can see, it's saying negative 40 for intake temp because I don't have my speed density uh, sensor hooked up and I don't have a way to actually thread it in there. Uh, so that's going to be why I have that check engine light. But yeah, AFRs look fine. Obviously the car is not retuned, so yeah. So that's gonna be, yeah. AFRs are good. I don't know how it's going to drive, but I mean, so far so good. Um, definitely my oil pressure is a little bit crazy now because I had to add a, a right angle to it to clear my throttle body. So it's starting to show my oil pressure kind of jumping around a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's gonna stabilize by the time it warms, warms up, but I have noticed that it's starting to jump around like that now ever since I added that right angle. So yeah, I mean that right angle is definitely going to affect the flow of the oil. So but yeah, if I, if I rev it, it's definitely going to, uh, yeah, just, just watch. It's probably gonna die. Oh, no, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, my, my oil pressure is just looking really crazy now. But, yeah. This thing's awesome. All right, let's go to the back and uh, I'll show you guys how that uh, exhaust sounds from the back of the car. Obviously, uh, the cam lobe isn't all that crazy. Um, the reason why is because uh, I need to get it retuned, so yeah, it doesn't really uh, recognize this idle too well right now. So yeah, it looks like uh, oil pressure did stabilize, so that's cool. And yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that this thing is running again. This, this, whole, this, this whole setup is just gonna be just everything. So. Yep. Oh, gotta love ball bearing turbos too. You can just hear them just uh, spooling down. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, this is pretty much the build, guys. So, um, this thing came out super nice. Came out just how I wanted it to as well. No complaints so far. Uh, I'm so happy that this all came through and this all just came through so perfectly as well. It's just crazy. All right, so that is pretty much going to be it for this video. Just kind of give you guys a whole overview on the car. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope that you guys take some inspiration or some insight off of this whole build I've had here with the GC. There's not really gonna be much more I'm gonna to have to post about the GC being built anymore. It is pretty much where I want it at for now. Things will come up of course, but I think that was pretty much it for this uh, little series I had with this, this GC. Obviously, you know, I'm gonna be recording, you know, what I'm gonna be doing with the car, just having my fun and whatnot, but yeah, this thing has come along so well, and like I said, thank all of you guys. Like, thanks to all of you guys, honestly. You guys have been supporting me, both on my Instagram and on my YouTube. Like, you guys have really pushed me through this whole thing, and like I said, I, I'm just happy that I'm able to kind of like open up kind of like another door as to like what you can do to your GC and what you can't do, and just kind of just show you guys that, hey, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a technician, I'm just some random person. Like, if I can do it, you can do it. You kinda just have to set your mind to it. Definitely get a daily. Don't do this thing if this is like your only daily. Like, it's gonna be, yeah, horrible if you try to learn on your own car. That's your only type of transportation. Uh, but, yeah, I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Uh, like I said, thank you guys so much for the support. Please uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm gonna have to post up the, the dyno video whenever I do get this thing dynoed. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to be there. Um, if not, we'll see. But 
I'm definitely gonna be making some really high numbers, definitely above 600, that's all I'm going to say. Um, I'm not gonna say how much I make this time around. Um, you guys will just have to just guess. So, uh, I wanna keep that a secret to myself because it just kind of makes people wonder like, damn, like how much car, how much power is that car really making? It just kind of make people curious. I don't care if I win all the time. I really don't care. I'll lose, you know, just it's the name of the game. It's just the way that it is. I don't care about the fastest car. I don't care about the fastest times. As long as I'm having fun and everyone around, like everyone else around me is having fun too. That is all that matters to me. So um, yeah, once again, I appreciate you guys so much for watching. You guys are awesome. I hope wherever you guys are, you're having a great night. You're having a great day. Um, like I said, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, thank you guys. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.